everybody, welcome back to Video Game Esoteric, and I got a brand new series starting off today. You've been asking for Raspberry Pi content, and I'm here to deliver. I'm calling this series High Time for Pi Time. I know it's a little bit stupid, but it's also really fun. I'm going to be talking about how to set up the Raspberry Pi today, both the hardware and the software. It's a 2022 guide to get you up and running with the Pi. Before I get too far involved, do me a huge favor. Go down below and hit like, subscribe, and that notification bell definitely helps us out. If you feel so inclined and want to support the channel, I have a Patreon link in the description as well. But taking a look at the Raspberry Pi, this is the 4B, 4 gigabyte model. It's a very, very, very small board, but what it can do is absolutely exceptional. And it has all these different ports, and we will go over them a little bit more in depth in the video later. But the one thing you need to realize is the micro SD card slot is on the bottom. That can confuse some people every once in a while, especially when it's in a case, but that's what you're going to be dealing with. And you insert it just as so, because it doesn't have a direct functionality to it and these things can go both ways. I'm starting off simple and we will get more complex as we go along. But the main things you need are a power supply, you're going to need a micro HDMI to HDMI cable, I have a switch that allows you to manually control the power as well. This is a can of kit kit, I'll link it below, it's not an affiliate link, and a micro SD card reader. But the first thing we need to do is decide what we're going to put on the Raspberry Pi itself because there are multiple options for what operating system or front end you want your games to be playing in. There's something like RetroPie, you can do LACA. This is subjective, but what I'm going to do for this tutorial is use RetroPie. I feel like that's the most commonly used Raspberry Pi operating system for retro gaming. I see it probably 9 out of every 10 builds, so that is what I'm going to be showing you guys how to do. So before we actually build the Pi, let's get the SD card setup made. And we'll see here on the download page is pre-made images, and you're going to download them based upon what Pi model you have. This is the Raspberry Pi 4, so that's what I am using. Use what you need. Most people, if you're buying new, you're definitely going to want to get a 4. The installation is relatively straightforward. If you can copy files from one folder to another, you should be fine. You need to flash the image that we're going to download to the SD card. I always use Win32 Disk Imager. It's my preferred method, and that's what I'm going to be teaching you guys here. But all we need to do is take that zip file and uncompress it so we can get the image file out. If you know how to use Windows, you definitely are able to open up a zip file if you're on Mac. It's very similar, but this is a Windows-specific tutorial. You'll see as this folder opens up here, we're going to have the image that we need to pop onto that micro SD card. It takes about 5-6 seconds that was in real time. Now warning with Win32 Disk Imager, the drive ID is crucial. We are flashing an image to a drive. You can screw up and put this image on the wrong drive and you can see I have a lot of them connected to my computer. Double check, triple check, quadruple check. Go ahead and pick that Raspberry Pi image we just decompressed and we're going to go ahead and click right. It's going to ask you one more time if you want to do this. Make sure the letters match on your USB drive. I cannot stress this enough. And then it's going to flash the image. This takes in real time about three to four minutes, but of course through the magic of editing I'm going to go speed it up. And now we have flashed that image to the micro SD card and we're ready to pop it into the Pi and make the operating system start running. You'll see here all those files that we need are there. So we can go ahead and take that micro SD card out of our computer and slot it back into the Pi and it would be ready to run from here. But we're going to build the entire system because we're not quite ready yet. The first thing that comes in that can of kit, or if you're picking parts yourself, what you want to do is pop some heat sinks on the chips. Now this is a very small board, but we still need to deal with heat dissipation. So you'll see we have three heat sinks and three chips to put them on. That small one goes on the VLI chip, not the higher up chip. They're very similar sized, but this is what it's intended to do. Now best of luck peeling the little adhesive tab off. It took me forever, I did it off camera, maybe your fingernails are better than mine, but once you have that off, we're just going to go ahead and try to best we can, and it is hard on camera, to center that heat sink on top of the main processor. Go ahead and push down a little bit to make sure it sticks, but not too much, and go ahead and pop the other heat sinks on the appropriate chips as well. You don't have to match the fin direction, honestly, on two of the three chips, I just do it because I like the look of it, and you'll see I got it relatively centered. Now we need to deal with a fan. If you orient the board like this, you're going to see the letters J8. That is our orientation. And if we count in the pins, the second and third pin on the top are going to be 5 volt and ground. 5 volts are power, ground is ground. If we go to that second row in the bottom, the furthest to the left pin is 3.3 volts, which would cause the fan to run a little slower. I'm going to use 5 volt, and on the fan in the kit, 
Red is the voltage, black is ground. That's almost always consistent across anything. We popped the five volt red line into the second pin from the top on the left and ground into the third pin. That is going to allow this fan to run when there's power delivered to the Raspberry Pi. Make sure you're doing this correctly. I will put up a link with a diagram to the pinout as well, but on the top of the board, orienting with J8, that's how you do it. Now taking a tour around the device itself, we have two USB 2.0 ports, two USB 3.0 ports, and on this end we also have an Ethernet adapter. Those are all going to be very important, we'll go over them later. On the side of the board with all the other ports, we have USB-C power delivery in, and no, those are not micro SD ports, or sorry, micro USB ports next to it. Those are HDMIs. We're going to use the leftmost HDMI to get signal out, and we also have a headphone jack as well. And on this end here, obviously, we have that micro SD card. But that's kind of a tour around the physical properties of the Raspberry Pi 4. But I definitely also recommend putting this in a case. Now, this Canicut case is the cheapest plastic thing ever made, but it is functional, it is cheap, so why not just use it? Because electrostatic discharge can be an issue and the Raspberry Pi 4 is a bare board. So this case here, I'll just show you how to put it together really quickly. It is dumb easy. If you buy a different case, it's going to be different, but based upon the fact that this tutorial has a link to a certain amount of parts that you're going to use to make this, I will talk about this now. It pops apart in three different areas and you have that micro SD card. All you do with the Pi is slot it in, push it down, it clicks in, it is extremely easy, there are no screws, there are no anything other than plastic retention clips. Go ahead and carefully thread that fan through the plastic, and there are cutouts for all those ports in the front so you know how to orient it, and the fan is just press fit. Put the fan in whatever orientation you want, go ahead and press down and those plastic clips will hold it in place. Just make sure when you're putting the lid on to keep those wires away from the flan blades so they do not click or obstruct the rotation of it. Go ahead and put that top case on, push it down, and it clicks in, and now we have that Raspberry Pi 4 protected from all sides with this plastic case. Like I said, it's not the nicest thing I've ever seen, but it's cheap and it's functional. It will protect your investment while you're using this. Even if you drop it, it should be fine. Now taking a look at the side here, we've got the USB-C power in, those two micro HDMI ports, and the headphone jack. And with this setup guide, we have this power switch right here that gives you a button. I like this, that way you can control the power in from the wall versus it just automatically powering when you plug it in. You just take the wall adapter, you plug one end of the male end of the USB-C cable into the female port and now we have a switch that we can turn the Raspberry Pi on or off. So we're ready to hook this up into a TV and see what it does. Now on first boot you're going to see all of this Linux jargon flashing by the screen. It's going to flash in and out. You're going to get the RetroPie logo and then very shortly it's going to go back to those Linux prompts. This is all automatic but this is what it's going to look like when you first see the system boot up. So it's fine, don't worry about it. Now there are multiple steps to getting this running, to getting a USB gamepad configured, and to getting your ROM files over onto the system, and I will walk through them all step by step. It is not hard, but it is multiple steps, and I wish it was one step shorter, but it is just a reality of it. After these Linux prompts finish up, you're going to see a screen that says one gamepad detected. This is if you plugged in a controller. To plug in a controller, all you need to do on the side of the unit is just plug a USB cable into one of these ports and then plug the other end into your controller. Hold down any of the buttons on the controller and it will give you the configuration screen. Make sure you do this correctly. If you get something transposed and up is down and down is up, it's going to be really annoying to navigate the menu until you can fix it. It is easy to fix, but just pay attention when you're configuring the gamepad. That way, all of the buttons are exactly where you want them to be. I'm using an Xbox One controller. You can use basically anything. I'm sure that there's probably one controller out there that this Raspberry Pi 4 RetroPie image is not compatible with. I have not found it yet. PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, Xbox One, Xbox Series X, different controllers from RetroBit, 8-Bit Do, they all seem to work perfectly fine over USB. If you want to make sure that you know a controller works, just Google it. Somebody out there, if they've had an issue, will be able to answer it. Make sure you assign the hotkey button. That's going to be very important. I did it to the Xbox logo in the middle of the controller. And now you'll see here, we're in RetroPie. 
but of course you don't have any games yet but just giving you a tour through the main menu you have different settings you can change some of them are going to be important some of them aren't going to be as important and accidentally backed out but you can scrape information from different game databases for the games you have installed you can go to the sound settings and change the system volume. I think it should be more like 80%, not 96, but that's also with my capture card. It gives you all sorts of different settings you can change. You can change UI settings, different screen savers, power down modes. This is all just stuff that you can go through in your own time. It seems to be set perfectly fine for first use, so I'm not suggesting you enable or disable anything. Maybe just turn that volume down ever so slightly. But now the question is, it's up and running, how do we get games on it? And that is its own process that I will go over right now. So the method I prefer is using a USB stick. It is the simplest, even if it's an extra step, because this is a tutorial, I feel like everyone's gonna understand how to drag and drop files. All you need to do is use any USB stick that Windows will read. If it won't read it, just format it in FAT32 or XFAT, either is fine. All you need to do is create a folder on the USB stick and call it RetroPie. If there's anything else on the stick, I suggest deleting it and just having this one folder. When that's done, plug it back into the USB-C port on your Raspberry Pi. If there's an activity LED, it'll blink. When it stops blinking, it's done. If there is no LED, wait like five minutes. That should be more than enough time. And then go ahead and unplug the USB stick from the Raspberry Pi. Pop it back into Windows and if everything worked correctly, you will see organized ROM folders and BIOS folders for your games. All you need to do to get a ROM over is drag and drop. We're gonna do PC Engine first. I can't tell you where to find the ROMs, and I actually do own all of these games, no judgment if you don't, but go ahead and open up the folder for the system you're trying to deal with and drag and drop. They just need to be unzipped ROM files. If you need a BIOS file for any sort of system, just go ahead and locate it wherever you may be and put it in the BIOS folder. Unplug that USB stick from your Windows machine plug it back into the USB 3 port, like I said, a lot of round tripping, and then if there's an activity LED, let it hang out. If there's not, wait three or four minutes, go to quit, and restart emulation station. This is going to then, it's been moving files in the background, you'll see it's loading different things, and now every system that we put a ROM in for the right folder now appears on the operating system or graphical user interface and we can start selecting things. Our Raspberry Pi is up and running, we are ready to play games. It's one extra step than I think it should be, but it works perfectly fine if you follow this tutorial. You'll see this little launching magical chase. You can press any button to configure it. This is just base configuration. This is not a how to configure the cores or how to change options video. If you guys want that, leave a link below. But you will see right here, we're gonna be playing magical chase on the Raspberry Pi with the PC Engine core. And it's a ton of fun. And so far my experience with playing games has been quite positive. You will see this is the size of the image spitting out. There's different scaling options and I will go over those in later videos if people want me to. Like I said, leave me a comment down below. But through the magic of video editing, I can scale this in Resolve. If there's any shimmering, this is because I'm not scaling it on the Pi. I'm doing it in post-production. But everything's playing exactly how I would expect this game to play. It feels similar to playing on a PC engine and that's great. Now, like I said, when you do that hotkey assignment at the beginning, hold down the hotkey and then press start and select at the same time. It'll bring you back to the main menu and then you can change to play whatever system you have ROMs installed for. My one thing is that the volume is a little high. Go ahead and listen for like 35, 45 seconds and see what I mean. That just means you need to change the volume in the main settings if that's the case. But enjoy some of the soundtrack on Metroid Prime and then we'll go right into Pocky and Rocky. And this is not Metroid Prime, it's Metroid Zero Mission. I'm an idiot. Pocky and Rocky sounds great and exactly how I would expect it to sound, but Metroid Zero Mission was too hot. It was clipping the channels. If you have that issue, just go into the main menu on RetroPie and turn down the system volume. It may just be part of my capture card, or it may be that it's just set too high off default. But I will say, at least from a very non-scientific lag testing standpoint, 
punch out feels perfectly fine. I'm able to dodge even if it is just glass Joe, so that is a good sign. And just taking a look at one last game here, the original Castlevania on the Nintendo Entertainment System, everything I've thrown at the pie so far has been working perfectly fine. Now I'm not saying it's emulating perfectly or not, I'm going to be talking about that in later videos, talking about more about each individual emulator that's available on RetroPie. But this is how you get everything set up. If you do have any questions though, leave them down below. I'm happy to help if you have issues. I'm always around where I can point you in the right direction because it's not hard to set up and once you get it set up you don't really need to worry about it but there are a few tricky things that I mentioned in the video about round tripping those files that you need to know and people have been asking a lot for Raspberry Pi content why did I buy one because I'm going to be putting the Raspberry Pi directly up against the Mr. FPJ DE10 nano board project to see how they fare against each other Sure to that, thanks so much for watching guys. Do me a huge favor, hit like and subscribe, that notification bell definitely helps us out. I'll have videos throughout the week as well, and you'll be seeing more Pi content pop up on the channel. But I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye.